Ooh. Welcome to the secondary channel of my uh, first things first. Before I get into the specifics of what I'm going to talk about, I'm going to say one thing first. The Doritos Heatwave Challenge is going to be up this coming Monday on the main channel. The video that was uploaded on Friday is Reading Stupid Tweets. It is inspired by Joe Santa. I don't want to say his last name wrong. Santagato. 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 I'm really confused on <laughs> how to pronounce his name right now, apparently. But, anyways, enough of that. What I'm here to talk about today is the entire PlayStation Xbox thing. I know it's been an ongoing thing between the Clan. Not Clan Wars. Console Wars, but I'm going to talk about a survey that Xbox did. Now, the survey included a lot of different things. It included where you live, do you have a living arrangement, are you married, are you single, what gender are you, age group, that sort of thing. Now, I haven't read Sony's yet that they did, but what I can tell you right now is that survey that they did for Microsoft through the Xbox One, is about 50% of owners are female gamers. Now, uh, the thing I see the most of, of people hating on Microsoft, is not of women. It's maybe 1% of women that are hating on it. And then, <laughs> of course, you have the guys, where it's about 45% like Microsoft, the other could not care less about the company. Now that's mm, about, let's say, I want to say 35, but I know that's terrible math. So if you do the 45, go back, say 55, that percentage are Sony, and they do not like Xbox. Now, going through this entire thing, most people that own it are actually married uh, it's a large number, I believe it was 28%, if I remember correctly, that were married gamers that had Xbox Ones. Now, uh, 51% to 55% were the female gamers, the rest of them, the 45%, were the males. Now, the thing that is the lowest that you think would be higher is actually little kids being on Xbox. Now that comes as a surprise because most people, when you're going and playing a game, you hate hearing those squeakers. But 90% of those squeakers are actually over on Sony's side of it using the PlayStation. You just don't notice as much because most of them don't use a mic. Now on Xbox, you actually do have the little kids that do use the mic. Doesn't really make much of a difference. It's about 1% of the time you'll have the one that pretty much says what most people complain about about COD is all the squeakers running around saying, I did this to your mom, that sort of thing, calling you noob. <laughs> That's about 1% of the squeakers on Xbox. It doesn't really happen very often. Now, as far as female gamers go, uh, us men... Most of us, I'm not part of this most of us, but most go, well, technically the industry is more orientated to men than it is to women. Uh, that's only true if you are looking at the Sony end of things. Most men go over to Sony, and that's pretty much where all the squeakers are. That's where they go, and then majority of your women go over to... Xbox, but you do have the seldom few that have both machines, or one that picks one over the other. It's seldom, but it's not a common occurrence. Uh, the other thing is the entire console wars. Now, the PS4 Pro has been out for a while now. It has sold relatively well for people that actually have 4K TVs, so they can utilize the functionality of their system. Now, Microsoft right now 
sort of can do the same thing with the smaller Xbox, which is a white version. It's essentially a slim version of the original Xbox One. I have the original Xbox One. It works perfectly fine for me, other than, as we know, a couple videos ago. Connect sounds like crap when you're trying to do a video. But that's a common thing. The nice thing about Microsoft, though, that they sort of went and screwed the pooch on is the entire broadcasting system. Through their update that they released in March, it kind of forced Beam down our throats. Now, a lot of us do not have a fan base on Beam. Our fan base is on Twitch and YouTube. It is not on Beam. Beam is a nice service in some ways, but you have to get used to the kinks in that service, such as certain ones that aren't played very much on Twitch are played more progressively on Beam. And then again, the ones that still aren't on that list, they still fall short and nobody will see your broadcast unless they are following you. Now, Twitch has a nice thing called a search menu where you get to search for games. Beam sort of has the same thing, but the issue with Beam is they sort of go and insinuate what you are trying to do. Now, uh, I can type in, for example, uh, Pokemon. Now, if I want to watch... Uh, somebody play XD or Coliseum, it may take a while to find it on Beam because you have to go and make sure that person is actually doing what you want. So it's kind of a wonky system. They don't show as many pictures of what you are looking for. So say you want to go and watch Dota, it might say Dota on the thing, but <laughs> they might end up playing something else like Minecraft just under the name Dota to try and clickbait you into watching it, but they are not even playing that, and or they were, but they're finished, and they didn't bother changing the title. Now, PS4 actually glorifies in the broadcasting system. They make it easier to go and stream onto YouTube. They make it easier to go and stream onto Twitch. Now, the part that Sony has a lot of issues with as far as that goes, is there can be a lot of connection errors that happen between here and there. But for the most part, it'll keep your stream going, but you just have to force reset, which is a nice thing on Xbox. If you go and dashboard out of your game, it'll completely end the stream. It won't show the symbol saying I'm offline right now, but you'll still have the audio loop going through of what you're saying in the background. That's the nice thing. But the issue with Xbox, once again, they go dashboard it, they end the stream completely. Now, I kind of understand in a sense that if you were streaming a certain game, they want to make sure they get it right and that you're streaming in the correct category. But as far as I'm concerned, PlayStation and the broadcasting aspect does it right? Sure, they have a few issues here and there, but for the most part, there is no issues with streaming on PlayStation. Now, that's a plus one for PlayStation. Xbox, however, when you look at the controller, it's a lot more familiar to use a Xbox controller, and I'll just go and compare two old age controllers. Now, this is where another plus is actually going to be the first one for Microsoft themselves. When they are doing the controllers, they are always looking at upgrading the controllers, acquiring new tech, putting them in, and as far as PlayStation goes, they haven't really done too much. Here we have the standardized PlayStation 3 controller, and... <laughs> The controller never really changed over its lifetime. And that's kind of where Microsoft took the lead as far as the 360 goes. 
But the part that was nice about the PlayStation 3 is you didn't have to go and buy the subscription cards. Now I understand for certain reasons they went the subscription route, not just to earn more money, but to produce more content faster so they could hire more people, they could do that sort of thing. Now, this is a special, minus the stickers, controller that Microsoft had developed within the time span of the 360. I believe it was about three years before the end of its cycle, before they came out of the last version of the Xbox 360s. They went through four different versions. The PlayStation 3, however, went through three versions, pretty much progressively getting from bigger and bulkier to smaller, sort of like the Xbox One right now. When you bought that at launch, it was pretty much a giant frickin' brick. Look at the PlayStation 4. It was nice, sleek, smooth. But my only complaint was that uh, I'm kind of unfamiliar with the way PlayStation thinks when they're going and putting these consoles together. So when I'm playing on a PlayStation 4, I usually have to ask, where's the power button and where's the eject button? Because I'm not used to it, but that's with any kind of consoles. But the most interesting part that they put in tech was the fact that you could go like this with the D-pad for the final special edition of the controller for, obviously, the 360. Now, you try doing that with a regular PS3 controller, you're going to pretty much break every button in existence on the controller. Now, as far as the triggers go, uh, it's still kind of weird for me because I'm not used to it. Uh, for example, you're playing COD, your primary buttons are at the front, they are not at the back. Now, when you're playing Xbox, for me, it, I like it better because it feels better on the hands to actually have my fingers like this, be able to move them like that. That's just me personally. Let me know in the comments down below which controller you like better. Personally, I prefer Xbox for this kind of stuff. So, as far as Microsoft goes, that's a plus one for the controllers. But, let's move on to the next section. Um, this is going to be a four-parter. Before I end the video, now we went through the statistics, females more or less going to the Xbox more than they are going to Sony. Men dominate Sony, women go and dominate Microsoft, and I'm, I'm part of the Microsoft train, so eh, can't do much there. But now, let's go right back to the PS4. The PS4 dashboard. It is nice, clean, smooth. It has not really changed that much over the course of its lifetime so far. And then you go and look at the Xbox One, also known as the X-Bone. It went through strange changes, went from one way, you get used to it, and then they change it again on you. You just get used to it, they change it again because they didn't like the look of something. Finally get used to that, and right now we're on our fourth frickin' change of the dashboard, and it's to the point where it's getting ridiculous because they can't make up their mind the way they want to do things. Then they go and force all this broadcasting stuff down our throats. We don't want to use Beam. We want to use Twitch. We no longer can look at our Twitch chat, which to me is BS, because they went and got rid of the Snap, board that was on the side of the console yeah it would limit your screen make it smaller but at least i could see my chat when i was playing a game and i could see it the way they're seeing it now i'm not a hundred percent sure if sony actually has it that way but that's the way microsoft was now it's kind of forced you have to use beam then we'll give you the chat board we'll tell you who's watching yada 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 and overall, it's just a mess on both the dashboard and the broadcasting aspect. Once again, point Sony. Now the final point, I'm going to give a plus to Xbox. And actually, it's not to do with the exclusives that are now Microsoft exclusives. And it has nothing to do with Sony exclusives. 
we are going to look at the games in general. Now, most people that have a fine eye for detail prefer using the PS4 Pro right now due to the fact that most of them actually have 4K TVs. Now, the other thing on Xbox side is they sort of have the same thing with the slimmer Xbox. And it's uh, pretty much the same premise. It's just not as strong as the PS4 Pro. Now, I can't say much for the Scorpio other than it comes out at the end of this year. It's supposed to be the all-powerful juggernaut. But as far as that goes, I can't say much because there's not too many details out about it. It is a teeny bit stronger than the PS4 Pro. Now, here's the issue with the PS4 Pro. It isn't really true 4K right now unless the developer goes and does it. Right now, technically for games, Xbox actually has true 4K that is actually properly running. PS4 Pro right now only goes and upscales everything because they don't have a whole lot to work off of. So I'm just going to leave that as another point for Microsoft, but as, and this isn't even the tiebreaker, but a point actually goes to the Nintendo Switch, mainly for the reason being is it is a portable console. Now, Nintendo has a strange habit of recycling old things and making it seem new again. And I feel like they hit the nail right on the head with the Nintendo Switch. Fortunately, I can't show you one because I do not own one. But as far as Nintendo goes for that one, their entire premise is not actually about games. It's about making friends and actually playing with others. Now, that's the entire enjoyment aspect Nintendo has been about for years, and I give a plus to them. But anyways, thanks for watching. This is another Xbox versus Microsoft video. And it talks a little bit about the console wars and what I think about the systems overall. So far, we're 2, 2, and 1. But anyways, I'll catch you all in the next video.